Every time the James Webb Space Telescope makes a new discovery, we enter a new era of cosmic exploration. We learn something new and amazing about the universe and its history. And this time, we have a new discovery that talks about star formation in individual galaxies during the epoch of Ryanization, or Cosmic Dawn, for the first time. Imagine you could travel back in time and see this era, just a few hundred million years old. What would you see? How would it look like? How did the first stars and galaxies form out of the dark and cold gas that filled the space? How did they light up the universe and change it forever? These are some of the most fascinating questions in astronomy, and they have been very hard to answer until now. Thanks to a new discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope, we can now peek into this mysterious time of cosmic dawn when the first bright objects appeared and transformed the universe. Using its amazing mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, Webb has seen something that no one has ever seen before. In this video, we will explain this discovery in detail, how it was made, and why it is so amazing for our knowledge of the universe. We will also show you some beautiful images of the galaxies seen by Webb and other telescopes, and how they reveal their secrets to us. So get ready, because you are about to see the universe like never before. Before we dive into the discovery, let's talk about what cosmic dawn and star formation are. These are two things that will help us understand why this discovery is so amazing. Cosmic dawn is a time in the history of the universe when the first stars and galaxies were born. It happened from about 150 million to 1 billion years after the Big Bang. It is also called Epic of Reionization because it changed the universe from dark and neutral to bright and ionized. What does that mean? Well. After the Big Bang, the universe was very hot and full of energy, and it was made of tiny particles that were moving very fast. As the universe got bigger and cooler, these particles joined together to form atoms, which are the building blocks of matter. Most of these atoms were hydrogen atoms, which have one electron orbiting one proton. This happened about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. After that, the universe entered a long period of darkness, there were no stars or galaxies yet, only clouds of hydrogen gas that blocked all light. The only thing we could see was the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is the leftover light from the Big Bang. But this darkness didn't last forever. Eventually, some clouds of gas became denser and collapsed under gravity to form the first stars and galaxies. These objects were very different from what we see today. They were much bigger, hotter, and shorter-lived than modern stars and they produced a lot of light that could break apart hydrogen atoms again. As these objects formed and shone brightly, they created bubbles of ionized gas around them. These bubbles grew bigger and bigger as more stars and galaxies formed, until they filled the whole universe with ionized gas again. Cosmic Dawn is very important for studying the early universe, because it tells us when and how the first stars and galaxies formed, how they influenced their environment, and how they shaped the universe. But how can we see cosmic dawn? This is where star formation comes in. Star formation is a process that creates new stars out of gas and dust. Star formation is very important for understanding how galaxies evolve and how they affect their environment. Star formation can be traced by different types of light that are emitted by stars and gas. One of these types of light is H-alpha emission. H-alpha emission is a red light that is emitted by hydrogen atoms when electrons fall from a higher energy level to a lower one. H-alpha emission tells us that hydrogen gas is being heated up by hot stars. H-alpha emission is very useful for measuring star formation in galaxies because it tells us how much light and heat they produce, how much gas they use up, and how much gas they ionize. However, seeing H-alpha emission in distant galaxies is very hard because they are very far away and very faint. To do so, we need a powerful telescope that can see in infrared light and see through dust, and that's exactly what Webb can do. One of Webb's main goals is to observe cosmic dawn and study the first stars and galaxies. To do so, Webb uses a technique called deep field imaging. This technique involves pointing the telescope at a small patch of sky for a long time and collecting as much light as possible from faint and distant objects. This way, Webb can reveal galaxies that are otherwise invisible to other telescopes. 
One of the most famous deep field images is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2003 and 2004. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field covers an area of sky that is about one-tenth the size of the full moon, and it contains about 10,000 galaxies. Some of these galaxies are so far away that their light has traveled for more than 13 billion years to reach us. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field is one of the most profound images ever taken, because it shows us how diverse and complex the universe is. But Webb can do even better than Hubble. Webb can observe deeper, farther, and sharper than Hubble. Which means Webb can reveal more details and features about distant galaxies than Hubble can. One example of this is the recent discovery made by Miri in one of Webb's first deep field images, the James Webb Extreme Deep Field, which is an area of sky that is slightly larger than the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, and it contains about 15,000 galaxies. Some of these galaxies are so far away that their light has traveled for more than 13.5 billion years to reach us. The James Webb Extreme Deep Field is one of the most amazing images ever taken because it shows us how the universe looked like during cosmic dawn, thanks to Miri's special mode called Medium Resolution Spectroscopy, which allows it to measure the spectra of individual objects in a field of view. And by analyzing the spectrum of an object, we can learn about its physical properties, such as temperature, composition, velocity, and distance. Miri used this mode to observe an even small region within the James Webb Extreme Deep Field, and it found something remarkable, star formation in 12 galaxies that are located at redshifts between 6 and 9. This means that these galaxies are between 12.8 and 13.4 billion light years away from us, and they formed when the universe was only 500 to 800 million years old. These are some of the most distant galaxies ever detected by any telescope, and they are also some of the first galaxies to form during cosmic dawn. This is a stunning achievement, because it shows that Webb can see star formation in individual galaxies during this epoch, something that no other telescope can do. But how did Miri see star formation in these galaxies? And what does this discovery tell us about cosmic dawn? We will answer these questions in the next section. The discovery of star formation in individual galaxies during cosmic dawn was not easy. It took a lot of time and effort by Miri and its team of scientists. First, Miri had to observe the James Webb Extreme Deep Field for a long time, about 40 hours. This was to collect enough light from the very faint galaxies in the field. Miri also had to use four different wavelength bands to see the star formation, which is red-shifted by a lot due to the expansion of the universe. Second, Miri had to deal with a lot of noise and contamination in the data. Noise is any unwanted signal that makes it hard to see the true signal. Contamination is any signal that comes from other sources than the target galaxy. For example, noise can come from cosmic rays, detector problems, or background changes. Contamination can come from nearby stars or galaxies, or from other emission lines. To reduce noise and contamination, Miri and its team used several techniques and methods. For example, they used dithering, which is moving the telescope slightly between exposures to avoid detector defects and improve image quality. They also used spectral extraction, which is separating the spectrum of each galaxy from the surrounding noise. They also used line identification, which is matching the observed emission lines with known features and redshifts. By using these techniques and methods, Miri and its team were able to identify star formation from 12 galaxies with high confidence. They also measured their properties, such as how bright they are, how many stars they form per year, how many photons they emit that can ionize hydrogen atoms, and how many of these photons can escape their galaxy and ionize more gas. The results were amazing and surprising. The 12 galaxies are forming stars at very high rates, comparable to or higher than some of the most active galaxies in the local universe. They are also producing enough photons to ionize their own gas and contribute to reionization. They are also allowing a significant fraction of their photons to escape their galaxy and ionize more gas. These properties suggest that these galaxies are very important for understanding reionization and its impact on the universe. They show that star formation and ionization were already happening at very high levels when the universe was very young. 
This also shows that there were a variety of galaxy types and behaviors during this epoch. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about this amazing discovery made by Webb using its fantastic MIRI instrument. This discovery is just one example of what Webb can do, and there are many more exciting discoveries to come in the future. Webb is opening a new window into the universe, and we can't wait to see what it will reveal next. If you want to learn more about Webb and other space discoveries, you can check out our previous videos. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. We appreciate your support and feedback so feel free to leave us a comment below. Until next time.